let's have uh, the first module which is we have uh, plateau and classical criticism so uh, so i stopped the introduction of literary theory and criticism with a quote by uh, thomas de quincey there he says all that is literature seeks uh, to communicate power and all that is not literature seeks to communicate knowledge so we shall study the literature as power and uh, its evaluation so literature of power is referred as creative writing and literature of evaluation as creative writing is referred as criticism so the critical inquiry had begun almost in the 4th century bc in greece and we know the name plato okay the great disciple of socrates was the first critic who examined poetry as a part of his moral philosophy and plato was basically a moral philosopher and not a literary critic plato's critical observations on poetry lie scattered in his critical treatises the first one the iam uh, the symposium the republic the laws and the iam i o n he advocated poetry as a genuine piece of imaginative literature but in the republic which is a treaty on his concepts of ideal state he rejected poetry on moral and philosophic a ground okay so plato is a disciple of socrates uh, when he started his career literature declined and philosophy and oratory were on demand so plato discussed much of philosophy and less of literature and its value in society he is not a professional critic his dialogues thoughts are discussed in his famous work dialogues so this uh, book is in the form of dialogues between uh, so uh, that is his dialogue zone various literary uh, theories and aspirations so how he evolved to be a philosopher rather than a critic so uh, he was most celebrated disciple of uh, socrates so by his time the glory of athenian art and literature illustrated in the works of artists like phidias and uh, polyglottus writers like uh, you know uh, achilles sophocles euripides aristophanes was on the vein so and their place was taken by philosophy and oratory of which the chief praise were uh, parmenides empedocles socrates among the philosophers so and we have uh, uh, on that particular century gorgias and ifen lysias among the orators so that particular period is the golden age so confronted with a decline in national character the standards of social and public life the philosophers in particular discussed a great variety of matters of concern to the citizen and the state and applying the test of reason to it socrates had Uh, heads them by all his dispassionate quest of truth which often challenged many an established belief and convention among these general inquiry the value of literature okay uh, to society and its nature and function also come came in the uh, due share of consideration okay uh, and uh, we have a uh, plato here so uh, th- uh, and uh, there is a theory of forms in his your form okay um he, he that he expounded systematically in his work like phaedo and his another work republic so uh, it's uh, the familiar world of uh, world of objects which surround us and which we apprehend by our senses is not independent and self sufficient that's what he says there is uh, the, it, it is not a real world because it's depend upon another world there is a really real world which is existing the realm, realm of pure forms or ideas which can be apprehended only by reason not by our bodily sense perception we cannot see it but we can uh, uh, we can feel it by our sense so uh, he is uh, there is ideality and reality ideal and real so uh, he says plato says that so connection between uh, that two realm that is the ideal realm and uh, that is the uh, real realm so that the qualities of any object in the physical world are derived from the 
ओके प्लाटोज व्यूज ऑफ लिटरेचर और आर्ट लिटरेचर इन द आर्ट लाइक पेंटिंग एंड स्कल्पचर ओके आर्ट अकॉर्डिंग टू प्लाटो इज एन आइडिया सो आइडियाज आर अल्टीमेट रियालिटी थिंग्स आर मेड एज आइडियाज बिफोर द टेक अ फॉर्म ऑफ शेप सो ए ट्री इज एन इमिटेशन ऑफ एन इमेज और एन आइडिया सो सो ट्री इज ए कॉपी that's what uh, uh plato think and uh, art reproduces this first copy so it is twice removed from reality so uh, the thing is uh, the idea first then uh, the reality is an imi imitation of an image of an idea so uh, the, the there we have the tree and tree is a copy and if an artist who draws that tree in a painting that is the first copy uh, that is the twice removed from reality the things are imperfect to copies and art is more imperfect that is what uh, plato's views of art so art takes men far away from reality and this is dangerous so that is a uh, plato's view of art and there is uh, again he has uh, uh, his views on a uh, poetry plato attacks poetry and poets for the following reason and again he says uh, what he says about art it is twice removed from reality and it makes men believe in the imperfection okay uh, the poet writes a poem not because uh, 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 not because he thought for a long time and again on poetry uh, the poet writes a poem not because uh, he thought for a long time but because he is inspired suddenly so this suddenness cannot be truthful he says like that poetry uh, contains a profound truth but poetry fails in the test of reason it cannot take the place philosophy and it got, cannot make a better citizen that's what plato's thinking so poetry affects the emotion and not the reason okay so it's only emotion not the logic appeals to the heart not to the intellect not to the brain so emotions are temporary and they cannot be safe guides to man that is what i can plato's thinking so poetry is a non moral in character so it treats both virtue and vice alike does not teach moral to the readers it corrupts human beings so again that is what uh, the entire uh, views of uh, poetry uh, made by a plato so a uh, function of poetry is not just to offer pleasure it should teach some morals uh, so that should be the function of poetry according to plato it should contribute to the knowledge a poet should also be good teacher so okay in all kinds of literature he has a kind of a comment so uh, lastly on uh, drama a drama according to plato is a branch of poetry so is uh, is different from poetry in the following ways according to him uh, drama is to be staged it uh, approval and disapproval is uh, depends upon the audience uh, to convince the audience the artist use some cheap technique okay that is what his main problem so cheap techniques like quarrels lamentation thunder sound of animals so all these techniques things are shame in our normal life so such play should be censored is that what uh, plato says so audience will watching characters who are cowards knaves and criminals tend to become one such character okay they lose their individuality such characters must not be there in a play only good character should be have a role in a play so a play should have only good characters is what another uh, comment by uh, plato so plato is against the pleasure a tragedy and comedy gives okay a tragedy of the pleasure to the audience human beings are full of feelings like anger fear grief when they are in excess uh, there is a pleasure okay in comedy people laugh when a coward like a brave man or when a criminal acts like a honest man okay all these characters are not to be laughed at but they should be pitied is what uh, plato says a comic character must be a lovable and uh, he lived in an age of oratory so he gives rules for the spoken language which could be applied for the written word okay he gave more more importance to the uh speaker speaking speaker must be uh, thorough in knowledge he must be sure of what he has to say it must impress the hearer next speaker must be naturally gifted and he must be constantly in practice and his speech must follow a natural sequence and finally speaker must know the psychology of his audience okay all together a uh, plato con condemn uh, poets uh, he distinguish poetry with life uh, He is highly moralistic, and he believes uh, in an art for life's sake. So, uh, art for life's sake. His observation of tragedy and comedy are important contribution. He is the first to 
to see art as an imitation okay so uh, all together we can say like uh, he is a moral philosopher and his primary concentration was to induce moral values in the society and to seek the ultimate truth so when he examines poetry uh, his tool is mo rather moral not aesthetic so he does not consider the beauty of lines and uh, beauty of uh, themes in poetry but he finds it rather moral characteristics he confused aesthetics with morality ultimately concluded poetry as immoral and imitative in nature and uh, uh, so uh, that is something he has a uh, kind of um, uncommon with uh, uh, uncommon with who um, aristotle okay so there is a question why you are st still studying classical criticism because it gives insight to us into a critical way of thinking so uh, by studying classical criticism uh, we get a sense and understanding about how the literary theory is uh, increase capacities to think critically without the bias and prejudice or a preconceived notions as a student of uh, literary criticism and uh, we have a chance to study different points of view and the context of different genres of literature so we can also develop a critical sight and insight uh, to judge the literature but also to evaluate any good piece of literature of the present time so uh, in classical criticism we have uh, this greek roman critics belong to the classical school of criticism which is uh, still relevant today uh, the basic concept they can uh, they have given us to study literature with a uh, with a uh, still important and supply us with the basic ideas whereby to examine the literary text when we study plato's theory of mimesis uh, we come to know that literature is an imitation of nature and in aristotle when we study his definition of tragedy we come to appraise that this imitation is nothing but the imitation of an action so since aristotle in european tragedy has never been a drama of despair causeless death or chance of disaster so the drama that only pains horrors uh, and uh, leaves souls shattered and mind unrecoiled for the world may be described as a gruesome ghastly so that is what aristotle's uh, world of uh, literature so where he sees everything in a shattered uh, uh, in shattered dreams um uh, and so uh, again we are thinking of uh, plato so in his theory of mimesis mimesis is his theory mimesis means what imitation so plato says that all art is imitation by nature art is an imitation of life he believe that idea is the ultimate reality what is the ultimate reality idea is the ultimate reality art imitates the idea and so it is imitation of reality so it gives us an example of a carpenter and a chair so the idea of a chair first came in the mind of a carpenter isn't it so he gave physical shape to his idea out of wood and created a chair so the chair that is first in the mind of the carpenter that is the idea idea is the real reality of the real and the painter again imitated the chair of the carpenter in his picture of a chair so that the painter's chair is twice removed from reality hence he believed that art is twice removed from reality and he gives first importance to philosophy uh, as philosophy is something deals with ideas where poetry deals with illusion okay so illusion means things which are twice removed from reality so to plato philosophy is superior to what poetry so uh, again plato rejected poetry as it is mimetic in nature on the moral and philosophical ground on the contrary uh, there is another classical critic his name is aristotle he advocated poetry as it is mimetic in nature according to him poetry is an imitation that is true uh, imitation of an action and his tool of inquiry is neither philosophical nor moral he examines poetry as a piece of art and not as a book of preaching on teaching so that is to give us a pleasure only uh, so 
and again aristotle reply to the charges made by plato against poetry so uh, he he replied them one by one in his defense of poetry so again plato says that art being imitation of the actual is removed from truth uh, he uh, it only gives a likeness of a thing concrete and likeness is always less than real but plato fails to explain that art also gives something more which is absent in the actual okay the artist does not simply reflect the real in manner of a mirror art cannot be a slavish imitation of reality literature is not the exact reproduction of life in all its totality it is the representation of a selected uh, events okay what is a, a, a literature uh, literature is a representation of a selected events so necessary it is the representation of selected events and characters necessary in coherent action and um, uh, so these uh, uh, these elements are present in art okay so uh, it is not take us away from truth but it leads the essential reality of life that is what aristotle says so plato again says that art is bad hmm? why because it does not inspire morality virtue does not teach morality but uh, is teach in the function of art uh, it is the aim of the artist is to give pleasure only so uh, he gives uh, aristotle says that the function of art is to provide what pleasure or art uh, aesthetic delight uh, communicate experience express emotion and represent life so it is uh, it is not something that to give the what uh, morality mm? uh, plato judges poetry now from the educational standpoint so uh, from the philosophical one uh, from the ethical one but he does not care uh, to consider it from uh, its own unique standpoint okay that is what again another um, thing uh, about uh, uh, plato and aristotle have a difference in opinion towards uh, uh, what uh, all these things of uh, plato and uh, aristotle so uh, again uh, when we think about uh, plato and aristotle uh, aristotle all together agrees with plato in calling the poet an imitator and creative art imitation he uh, he imitated one of uh, the uh, three objects the things as they are as they were the things as they are said uh, thought to be and uh, he imitated what is past present what is commonly believed and what is ideal and aristotle believes that there is a natural pleasure in imitation okay as a, which is in born instinct in man so imitation is something that is in born in us it is a pleasure in imitation that enables the child to learn his earliest lesson in speech and contact uh, from those around him and um, Uh, because there is a pleasure of doing so so in a grown up child uh, or a, a poet there is another instinct helping him to make him a poet the instinct for harmony rhythm okay uh, uh, but uh, uh, i just told you he does not agree with his teacher plato because plato uh, plato says that poet's imitation is twice removed from reality and hands on real mm-hmm. to prove his point he compares poetry with history okay the poet and the historian differ not by the medium but the true difference is that historians relate what has happened the poet um is what what may uh, what may or ought to have have happened so that is the ideal so poetry is therefore is more philosophical okay than history and the higher thing than history because the history expresses the particular while uh, poetry tends to express the uh, universal therefore the picture of poetry pleases all and all to all time so aristotle does not agree with plato in the function of poetry making people weaker emotional sentimental for him catharsis is ennobling and is humbles human being so we shall see this catharsis in his uh, tra- uh, view, uh, aristotle's views of uh, uh, tragedy so uh, so uh, far as the moral nature of poetry is concerned aristotle believes that the end of poetry is to please okay whereas uh, plato think that the end of poetry is uh, morality okay how a teaching may be uh, the by product only according to uh, aristotle such pleasing is superior to the other pleasures because it teaches civic morality so all good literature according to aristotle gives what pleasure which is not divorced from a moral lesson Thank you.